Thanks so much for joining us and happy Friday to you. Also, happy first day of April. I know it has another name, but we won't go there right now. Uh, I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the ag commodities, and I'm joined by Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He is in Springfield, Missouri, and Brian, so glad you could join us here this morning. We're uh, actually past yesterday's reports, and now we are into a new month, a new calendar month, a new calendar quarter. And I just wondered from your opinion, from your perspective, what do you think that means? Does that mean that maybe we'll bring some money back into ag commodities now? Well, I think that's a prevailing hope is that, uh, you know, at the end of the month, end of the quarter, we saw some positioning uh, in the grain market, some profit taking off of uh, the daily highs, pulling us lower on the day that that was related to the end of the month positioning. Same thing in the livestock markets where uh, we saw a lot of pressure in the cattle. Uh, hopefully that was, again, uh, just some window dressing by the fund managers and that these uh, same fund managers will come back in uh, because it's the first of a new month here and start to rebuy some of these positions and we've seen some buying interest in the wheat overnight corn and soybeans are lagging but you see the the corn market has had some bear spreading the last couple days and i think part of that is because basis levels in south america are uh, much cheaper than u.s we're about a dollar uh, cheaper in south american corn prices than what the u.s is so uh, that is going to affect our longer term exports traders seemingly taking some money off the table in the oak crop contracts whereas we're putting a little bit of premium in because of the acreage numbers that came out yesterday. And then we look at the weather forecast. Next two weeks could be pretty uh, pretty wet, kind of cool. And if we continue that trend in April, we're gonna go from talking about dryness concerns to maybe some planting delays, and then possibly how many acres get shifted from corn to soybeans because of later planting. So all this is in the works, and uh, it's a supportive feature to December corn at this point. Well, I guess all that being said, Brian, uh, we almost have to have a perfect growing season just to keep up with the global demand uh, on the corn and maybe to a lesser extent soybeans. Depends on how that acreage actually does turn out to be. Uh, I did have a new bit of information here just a moment ago. We got some new overnight export sales business. Uh, what was it this time? It was corn. And this time around, it was a sale of corn of 136,000 tons, but the buyer is unknown. Ooh, one of those mysterious ones. So uh, we'll wait and see who that turns out to be. But it was some corn, and that's interesting. After the big market move that we had in the corn market yesterday, somebody came in and bought some. Uh, soybeans really were dragging their feet yesterday. I want to see what happened in our overnight session here. Interesting in the corn, where we were under pressure here, we see the nearby contracts on the May down two and three quarters at 746. But I want to put a little asterisk on that one, if you will. On that May contract, I was looking here at about uh, 730 this morning or so. You know, that was trading at 741. And it had a late spurt in that Globex trade. It rallied about a nickel in the last, oh, five to 10 minutes of trade. And so it was on the way up when it finished up, even though it closed a little lower. Keep that in mind because the momentum was upward right at the end of the Globex. Now, December was two and three quarters higher at seven, or excuse me, 686 and a half this morning. With our quotes provided by Bar Chart on soybeans, May was down two cents this morning at 16, 16 and a quarter, and November was down three and a half cents. Meanwhile, we finished up with the Chicago wheat this morning on the May contract, 22 cents higher at 10.28. And on the Kansas City market, we had that May contract 15 and a quarter higher at 1045. Spring wheat, well, we finished up the evening trade with the May up 23 and a quarter at 1102 and three quarters. Brian, we'll talk about the livestock trade here on a Friday when we come back. We're talking with Brian Hoops right now. And uh, Brian, I want to take a look at the livestock summary from yesterday. Looks like we had some cash cattle trade out there in the plains and the ranges were actually on a dress basis were really wide. However, on a live basis, the only thing I saw posted was uh, some sales at 138. That would be steady with what we had earlier. And on a dress basis, a wide range, 221 to 225 per hundred weight. And we'll call that steady to higher than what we had a week ago. Cash live hogs, uh, nothing to compare it to for a trend, but they did have an average price of 79.71 across the country. 
Carcass basis hogs were down 261 yesterday at 102.32. Now on the uh, futures trade, let's see how we finished up yesterday. Let's go to live cattle first. And on the board, we were lower across the board. We had April down 80 cents and June was down 87 on the close at 137.12. So faltering. We had the feeder cattle market really taking it on the chin. We had the April down 227, May closed 235 lower, the biggest loss in August. It was down 262. On the lean hog market, when we wrapped up yesterday's trade, we had the April down 277 and May down 342. Biggest loss in June, down 360 yesterday. That was after the quarterly hogs and pegs report. So, Brian, that uh, didn't bode very well for what may happen in today's session. Do you think they'll gain any of that back? Well, yeah, they'll probably gain some back in the hogs. We had an outside day reversal because we gapped higher uh, in reaction to that report on the opening and then uh, turned softer on some profit taking. I think a lot of it was tied to uh, end of the month and end of the quarter positioning, but it's also you know, hard to really push these futures a lot higher. That report was friendly and, and constructive and everything, but look at our prices where they're at already. Uh, we've dialed in a lot of that uh, into the, some marketplace already. As far as the cash cattle goes, 138 so, uh, traded this week. That's fully staying not only with last week, that's the fourth week in a row we've had 138 cash trade. And so I think the market is disappointed with that. We had early week rally, hoping to see better cash trade uh, because show list numbers were tighter, boxes were trying to move higher, and it just didn't happen. Um, you know, steer weights are still 15 pounds heavier than a year ago, uh, even though they dropped one pound this week. There's just a lot of supply because of these heavier weight cattle, and it's hard to imagine with the expensive uh, price of corn that these weights aren't going to come down. But so far, they really have not uh, compared to year ago levels. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the analysis this morning. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. Janet, we're ready to begin our trading day at the bottom of the hour.